Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds. It's Monday, and the Kansas City Chiefs are Super Bowl champions again. Your thoughts, sir? Well, I think they are now bordering on, if not officially claimed as a dynasty. It's a very good football team, and best player in the land was the one who guided them to that victory, 25-22 in overtime. Really a, a very exciting game. I'm not going to go so far as to say it was well played because <laughs> there were some... Uh, anxious moments in the game and some loose play. But the fact of the matter remains that Kansas City, in my opinion, had the better team. I don't think there's any question about it. Even behind 1916, I think they, they had what it takes to be able to get a win. Now, what puzzles me a little bit is the way that Mahomes took that ball, took the team, I should say, in the overtime once they got the football, down the field, with virtually no defense. Why why wasn't this done earlier in the game? Why didn't they build up the score? Well, that's something only the coaches and the players can answer. But maybe the defenses were different. I don't know. But the fact is that Kansas City gets the win. They, From a statistics standpoint, the teams were about even. Kansas City has the somewhat better numbers, including better rushing. Here you have Christian McCaffrey, arguably the best runner in the game, held to under 100 yards and some solid defense by Kansas City, and that's really what won it for them. Kansas City's defense blocked San Francisco almost at every turn. Brock Purdy was harassed in the backfield. I think he was sacked once but and hurried about four or five times. But in the end, when you take a look at things, Mike, it was a missed extra point or a blocked extra point. And again, credit the defense on this because they had their hands up in the air and kick was a little on the low side, knocked it away, and that made a huge difference as it turns out. What are your thoughts on it? Um, same. I, uh, I, was, I wasn't worried, <clears throat> but I was disappointed that they just looked like such a – elite juggernaut in Baltimore everything was ru- working right and then in this one they just uh, it wasn't until late of that first half definitely the second half that the defense started to really start to turn it up in those first few drives the 49ers were all over the place and looked like we did the week two weeks before and that's when I was like uh oh they want it more they really 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 want this and we just that first half didn't play like we really really wanted it but then started to fire on all cylinders and you're right that last drive it looked like we could have done that the entire game i think really it was it was the coverage that they went with and as soon as you go into that mahomes is so creative and so smart he'll just dice you apart and that last play to score the touchdown with McColl is a great example of how if you play that way and he sees it it's over well and if the Niners did change their defense I don't know that that's the case but if they did they made a big mistake because indeed Kansas City did right down the field it didn't look like there was much opposition uh, heck Mahomes who is who is folks the best player in the game there's no question about this the man is a leader he knows he wants to win and I'm not so sure Mike that you're uh, incorrect on that I think maybe the 49ers did want that game more but the 49ers do not have have, when it comes down to the boiling point, I think the overall talent. Now, that's not to say that given a few breaks, they can't win because they did. But the fact is that when you when you take the game and you boil it all down to a few points, because that's when you're playing pro football or pro any pro sport for that matter, that's where it's going to be decided. Those little microscopic incidents like, oh, a missed extra point. Well, it's one point. It's not going to make any Mm. difference. Oh, contraire. It did. And I think we saw that come to the fore. And that's why I was really interested in this ball game. Was I ever worried about the Chiefs? You bet your life I was. When they were down 1916 and not moving the ball very well, I thought, oh, we've got some problems Mm -hmm. here. But again, in the long run, you've got Butker, and you have you have the makings of a very good team. Now, having said all that, hey, celebrate, have your big parades and all that sort of thing. They know exactly what it's like. What are you going to do for me next year when you don't have, probably don't have Chris Jones in there? You know, that's one of the great things that our quarterback said as soon as they got a mic in front of them was, we're not done. 
we're not done. He's already thinking about this next season. Already. He which, may be. I love it. May, he, <clears throat> that may be, but you also hear that repeated every time. Hey, we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll we're not be, done. Uh, we'll see. We're not done, baby. <laughs> I'm proud of him. They overcame adversity. There were so many different one plays that it could have gone anyway. If the 49ers continued that drive, ran out the clock, game over. I, there were so many different variables that just, thank God for the Kansas City Chiefs, but my guy. they didn't have the leader. They didn't and have the, the leader. Chiefs do have the leader out there on the field. Mm-hmm. Makes a huge Makes difference. Makes all the difference. And I'm sure this won't be the last time we see Purdy. The Chiefs, once again, champions of the Super Bowl. It's even sweeter that we did it inside of the Las Vegas Raiders' home locker room and in their home stadium. It makes me even happier that this whole thing went down. But uh, yeah, it's over. Now we can rest for a little bit. Almost 62,000 is what the crowd was, which is, of course, a full house at Allegiant Field. But, yeah, it's a very good win for Kansas City, uh, an important win for them, too, because I think it establishes them now as a dynasty. You have Patrick Mahomes, who's still, heck, in what, late 20s now, leading the team. Got a long way before he's ready to hang things up. And the way Kansas City plays with the Andy Reid wide open hell for leather offense sometimes and then a controlled offense it was a very good and substantial win for kansas city even though it was overtime 25 22 i'm glad it didn't go into uh over or double overtime as some (laughs) of the people had quote unquote predicted would happen but uh, either way wear your red and gold proud kingdom it's nice to be a chiefs fan for a while but it wasn't the only thing that happened this weekend we actually had some basketball had a whole lot of basketball as a matter of fact the bears had indiana state the missouri valley conference leading team in here and the bears played very well they played indiana state right to the wire did not win and the reason the bears didn't win is because of the breaks they went to indiana state missouri state led for much of the game but indiana state down the stretch had the firepower to get it done i've not seen this mike in in all the basketball indiana state shot 44 zero trees made 12 of them 12 of 40 now that's 36 points right there that they got but 40 trays my gosh you're shooting the ball right across the midcourt line anyway what happened was that the Bears took the big kid, Robbie Avila, and they took double-teamed him, got him out of there, but that left a guy open, and that guy was Ryan Conwell, and he hit for 24 points, six of the 12 trees were his, and ultimately that made the difference. Bears were close at the end, but Indiana State is a very, very good basketball team, and they were the winners and retained their first place standing. Now, as far as the Lady Bears are concerned, they split the weekend beat Belmont in a very good game on Friday night. Lost yesterday to Murray State. End of your first loss of the year for the Lady Bears at home. 95-89 free scoring ball game. And that's, that's a tough way to go because the Lady Bears were hoping to be able to rest first place and get it away from Drake and Northern Iowa and those people. And they still have a chance of doing that because it is a long season. The Drury teams split their weekend both the Lady Panthers games at Rockhurst and William Jewell were wins for Drury, and both the men's games were losses for Drury. That's on the road. Up, that's their Kansas City swing. And Missouri, boy, the roof has caved in on them. Mm-hmm. They lose to Mississippi State 75-50. to 50. 75 to 50, and that was up at the Mizzou Arena. This team is 0 and 11 in the Southeastern Conference. They're headed for last place and headed for, and and I'm assuming that all the teams in the SEC get the postseason tournament, but that means they'll play right at the very start, and you didn't want to have to do that. But, hey, that's that's all part of it. It is all part of it, Ned, and uh, speaking of it's all part of it, we typically get a lot of weather problems in Arizona, but uh, wouldn't you know it, during a golf tournament, they do. They did. Uh, this, this one was delayed to some extent. They had to push it back a bit, but did get it completed. And Nick Taylor wins it in a playoff with Charlie Hoffman. They did have to limit the crowds in Phoenix because, uh, get this, they had so much rain there that there were mudslides going on, and some of the walking paths at Phoenix were... Uh, cluttered and so forth and so on so they had to limit the attendance and 
That's, hey, that happens when you're dealing with Mother Nature, so in, indeed, that's the case. Now, football just had their Super Bowl, of course. When does racing have theirs? Next Sunday. Next Sunday, the Super Bowl of racing is the season opener. Most unusual, Daytona 500. This is Speed Week in Daytona. They have all sorts of testing, and the trucks get in there, modified trucks, and some of the other levels of NASCAR. But the big ones, the late models, who are really the big deal, have their dual... 500s, and that's what they call her, dual 150s, I should say, on Thursday. They're qualifying races, and then the big one, the Daytona 500, is Sunday. So, yeah, a harbinger of spring, to say the very least. And a lot of racing coming up, Ned. You race on out of here, because I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day, and be safe.